This presentation has been developed specifically for Science Olympiad coaches in order to enable their teams to learn the content of Stellar Evolution for the high school C Division astronomy event. It is also going to be useful for B Division when it is in the rotation with the topic of Reach for the Stars. The materials and resources as well as this webinar are supported by NASA's Astrophysics Division Universe of Learning STEM Literacy Network project. Via the Chandra X-ray Observatory in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where the materials for Stellar Evolution and the webinar are posted. The Chandra Observatory uh, is located at chandra.harvard.edu in the virtual world. And when you click on the education menu, up comes two very important links for you. One says classroom ready activities, and that is where the Stellar Revolution materials are posted, and also Science Olympiad webinars. All of the webinars have been posted here for both astronomy and Reach for the Stars slash Solar System since 2013. And they are a really important resource for Science Olympiad teams. It's the very first resource they should access when they start to prepare for competition, for their regional and state competitions, or if they're going to invitationals. So the webinars are a way to give sort of an overview of not just the content, a brief overview of the content for the deep sky objects or the surfaces and features for, for solar system, but it is also really important because it lists all the major resources that teams can use to, to start preparation for competition. The Stellar Evolution materials themselves under the Classroom Ready uh, menu are um, under, if you scroll down to Stellar Revolution, you will see a whole set of materials that includes an introduction and background, a teacher guide, interactive tutorial. Uh, the teacher guide works just as well for Science Olympiad coaches as it does for classroom educators. There are three different sets of um, materials that have been put together, image sets, for three specific uh, kinds of stellar evolution uh, scenarios, our cosmic connection, stellar cycles, and stellar evolution. Those are three different specific card sets. The first two, cosmic connections and stellar cycles, um, have uh, classroom activities to go along with them to use in the classroom or to use by coaches in preparation for the more massive stellar evolution card set that has been developed. Uh, eventually, there will be a short webinar. There will be an overall webinar describing the entire set of stellar evolution materials, and there will be a short webinar for each specific card set. Now, um, also, the Cosmic Connection classroom set, you can uh, request as many of those card sets as you want to from the Chandra website. There's a place to download those. The Stellar Cycles one are not available anymore for to request, but they're still there on the website for you to download. But I can give you a way that you can still acquire a set of those if you want a, a set of those also. Uh, but what we're going to be focusing in on this presentation is the Stellar Evolution card set. Uh, this is what the set looks like. I put these deep sky objects uh, together to, and there's some of them are, are photos or actual images acquired by different various missions from the Astrophysics Division. And some of them are um, illustrations uh, put together by the uh, illus illustrators and animators, the artists that work with the, the different missions. Some of these are uh, HR diagram related, some of them are light curve related. This is a basic set that can be used to learn the process of stellar evolution. On the Chandra website, 
after the, the listing for this card set, and you can request as many of these card sets if you want. If you are running an invitational, a coaches or a coaches clinic, um, if you are a state a, a supervisor and you want to provide some of these sets for your various teams, you can re uh, request these on the Chandra website and they will be sent to you. There is also a description that lists what every single one of those objects is, what every single one of those images is, with a link directly to it so that you can learn all about that specific stage of stellar evolution. This is the graphic that we have been using forever to show the, pro to show the different cycles of stellar evolution based upon the initial mass of the star. Now, every single year, astronomy is stellar evolution and something. Um, this year it is, and this year being 2018, because I'm using the 2018 astronomy event, Deep Sky Objects, just as an example of how you use these objects to teach um, your teams the process of stellar evolution. Oh, I did not say that correctly. You're not going to teach them. You don't have to know anything about stellar evolution. They have to teach themselves. And th these, using these card sets will enable them to learn much more quickly and get a much in, more in-depth um, knowledge about stellar evolution and the phases that stars go through. So this year, uh, 2018, year, the topic is stellar evolution and type 2 supernovas. So if you go back and look at, at our uh, graphic, our illustration that shows stars evolving over time into their final end products, we're focusing this year on the top end, uh, the more massive stars and what happens to them. In fact, for 2018, we're concentrating on some really massive stars more massive than, than we have uh, presented before. So it's a little bit more interesting. And the cycles at the bottom of this event um, are the ones that were done last year. Um, last year, the co topic was stellar evolution and type 1a supernova events. Cannot have a type 1a supernova unless you have a white dwarf and it's only low mass stars that end up with a white dwarf in their sequence. So as you can see, sometimes we focus on one part of the stellar masses and at some years a different uh, range of stellar masses, but it's all stellar evolution. The stages, the scenarios are, are always very much almost identical, very few exceptions. So learning stellar evolution in depth to begin with, from then on, with that knowledge, once you gain it, then at least one half to 70% of the content in any B, uh, C division astronomy is going to be the exact same content. So it looks like you have to learn about the entire universe every year, but if you've learned stellar evolution, you do not have to learn it all because you already have the process down. If in the 2018 uh, event, we, if you look at the deep sky objects that were listed as required to have some uh, knowledge about, you will see that there were two star formation regions there were four massive stars, five type two supernova events, three pulsars, and a couple of binary systems thrown in. So those all represent, those deep sky objects, all represent specific stages of stellar evolution that are related to massive stars evolving from formation to destruction. So this particular slide here is actually the heart and soul of, of what I'm trying to get you and the teams to understand. So, because it is a process, you know, if you look at the graphic and you can see how stars evolve over time, it all depends upon their initial mass. They end up with different, a whole variety of end products from low mass stars and white dwarfs up through neutron stars, black holes, and for the ultra hypermassive, supermassive stars, complete and total annihilation. So 
involved in that process are three things. First, we have the process, the cycles, from start to finish. And you know, once you go through those cycles, and every, all of the, every, every star reaches its final end product, it produces all these elements that then are dispersed into the interstellar medium, and then they become incorporated in other clouds of gas and dust, and they become part of a future star formation complex and become a star. So it's a continuous cycling process which drives the universe. Stars drive the universe. Without stellar evolution, there would be no universe, which is why we focus on stellar evolution in Division C. It's also helpful that the NGSS standards also put stellar evolution as a really important concept for high school students to understand. So next we have these, as I've shown you already, these 16, 15 deep sky objects that were selected for 2018 for a specific emphasis, and they are chosen simply because they are either a good representation of that particular stage of stellar evolution, or there are things that we still do not know about them, which makes them quite mysterious and curious, or because they're doing, they do something all of a sudden totally unexpected, which causes scientists to kind of scratch their heads and say, hmm, gee, there's something going on here we never thought would happen or thought was possible, or we knew this in theory, but are we actually seeing evidence of it? So we, we have a, we, it, it takes a long time to select these deep sky objects, and they're all selected for a very specific reason. Hopefully it all comes together uh, in, in a meaningful way for the kids that are learning this content for competition. So then you know you have to know about the HR diagram. So, you know, the HR diagram is not a separate thing from the deep sky objects, from stellar evolution, because that graph, that plot, and we'll get into this a little bit in depth, I think, in the next slide, this graph is a representation of the graphic that's just above it. We have the pretty picture with the stars, the illustrations of the stars cycling through from formation to destruction, but underneath that is a graph of that graphic that is, allows us to understand better stellar evolution because the HR diagram is not a static graph. It is a, it tells the story of, of stellar evolution. It, 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 it is actually showing all the stages of stellar evolution because everything isn't showing up that's labeled on the graph. There are areas on that graph, as you will see, where other things are taking place as stars transition from one branch to another. Some of those deep sky objects are located on that HR diagram. Some objects cannot be located on it, but some can. And the stars that are listed under the deep sky objects are located on that HR diagram. And in some of those areas, as we will see, as stars transition from one branch to another branch, that's a very unstable process. And when they're doing that, they're in these regions of instability between branches as they're evolving from one stage to another. They exhibit a variety of behaviors. Um, and if you plot the change in their brightness over time, because it, it can be very, very variable, sometimes in a very periodic way, sometimes in a really haphazard, crazy kind of way, uh, it produces what we call light curves, that they are very specific for very specific regions on that HR diagram. So the, the light curves, the HR diagram, the deep sky objects, you have to put them all together to understand the process of stellar evolution. It can be done with these card sets. 